to Mimi's Sweet Life. Now I hope that you're here one of the reasons because you saw the little movie trailer that I did just a few days ago in anticipation for a making a man's birthday cake. I had a lot of fun doing it, making it, putting it together. I think maybe I'll do something along those lines again down the road. So I'm glad you're back with me today and we're going to be making the my husband's birthday cake happens to be very easily a vegan and gluten-free cake don't be scared of that you would not know it tastes absolutely delicious i made them as cupcakes about a week ago for a little party and it was amazing they were so good so tonight we're going to be making a chocolate cake vegan and gluten-free. So these are the five ingredients you'll need. One and a half cups of water, room temperature. One half cup of applesauce, I use unsweetened. One half cup of coconut oil, melted. If you don't like the flavor of coconut oil, coconut oil, you can use vegetable oil, but people seem to really like that little, little flavor of the coconut oil. And then we have four teaspoons of pure vanilla and two teaspoons of vinegar. I have white vinegar, but you could also use cider vinegar. We're going to start with our one and a half cups of water into a medium sized bowl. Then we will take the applesauce, unsweetened is what I use. Put it right into the bowl. It's not coming out so well. <laughs> Trying to get it so you can see it, but you know what applesauce looks like. There's the applesauce, and then we have the melted coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, that smells really good. Very, very delightful. Just adds such a nice flavor to the cake, and people usually go, what is that? Is that coconut? Yeah, it is. And like I say, if you don't like it, you don't have to use it. You can use regular vegetable oil. It'll work just fine and your vanilla. Now is for the most important part. You must, you must put in the vinegar. If you do not put in the vinegar, you will be in trouble because when this gets in with the dry ingredients, which has the baking soda in it. It has a little chemical reaction, an acidic reaction to it, like those volcanoes that you see when they make at school. So whisk this really well, and you just set it aside for 10 minutes. And while you do that, you can put your dry ingredients together. Don't forget to set your uh, not your timer, but your oven for 350 degrees. We have two cups of gluten-free flour and I use Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour. It already has xanthan gum, I believe, in it, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't need to add any of that. That helps give a little bit of a chew to the, uh, to the whatever you're making. And then we have a half cup of unsweetened cocoa powder plus four tablespoons more. Now the four tablespoons there could be replaced with Dutch uh, cocoa if you want. It has a little bit more of a deeper chocolate uh, flavor. Um, I The other time I made this I just did it all with the unsweetened cocoa powder. Then I have a half a cup of sugar, excuse me, one and a half cups of sugar one teaspoon of baking soda and one and one fourth teaspoon of salt and sift it all together
you know gluten-free used to be so very very difficult um, to do 15 years ago I guess it was when my son was diagnosed our youngest son we have four boys and when he was 14 he was diagnosed as celiac so he uh, had to and still has to be on a gluten-free diet um, it's a medical thing it's absolutely necessary when that happened I was like in a panic attack because I had no idea there was no help there was no signs on you know or labels um, on the food that said gluten-free like it does now I remember going to the store with my old flip-top uh, phone in hand pick up a, a can or whatever in the aisle call the 1-800 number on it from the company to say is your product gluten-free do you have any hidden glutens in there and they would kind of flip through a book that they had there to answer these types of questions it took me forever to find out and then they finally started putting things labeling gluten-free on it or the signs the stickers you know for the price <sighs> so much easier now I I really was in a panic and I thought he could never eat pizza again or bread or whatever well I've made a lot of things and times have changed and I'm so glad for that because it's been very very difficult um, on people and I, I'm glad for the change I'm so glad for the internet too because you can find out so many recipes such as this on the internet so yay for the internet and yay for having some really good gluten-free and vegan uh, desserts and, and breads and everything out there you'd never know these days so when this cake comes out mm, I wish you could taste it it's gonna be so good so maybe just a few more minutes okay so the timer just went off let's see what happened Ooh, that looks good I think it was probably in the oven for 24 25 minutes and uh, they look good they smell good and we'll see about that cake goop and the goop release the ingredients that you'll need are a half a cup of shortening a half a cup of vegan butter three and a half cups roughly of powdered sugar I always sift mine that way there's not the lumps half of a teaspoon of vanilla and one quarter cup or so of dairy-free milk this is the half cup of vegetable shortening Crisco is what I used so your half cup of shortening half cup of your vegan butter earth balance smart balance any other kind that is the dairy-free put them in your mixer and start mixing push it down and I'm going to do it a third at a time without made these cakes it was getting late so I wrapped them up in saran wrap plastic wrap and I stuck them into the freezer overnight so what I use I I need to do what's ever easiest on me simpler on my hands my muscles and everything so I use whatever I can to make life easy and quick for me this is a little kind of a wire it's a cake cutter and you can adjust it um, to different heights that you would like to do 
Okay, so I'm going to take my little cake stand and see it's on the feet. And hopefully, we'll just make it nice and even right on the top as it cuts through. I'm going to turn it a little bit so you can do it better. Maybe this way you can see. Pushing it down. Yes, my hands are clean. And there I have it. Okay, so I've got my plate from the other one. I have my bench scraper, which is wonderful to have. And you just roll back or take off whatever you can do. This is still pretty frozen, so it might be a little harder to get off. Yeah, it is, but it's all right. I know I've got it nice and level here, if you can see. And the other one is as well. I just take a little bit of the frosting, put it down here on the thing I bought from Michaels, just a, a few bucks, but for me it works right now. I don't have one of those big professional ones. I'm not a professional baker. I'm a homemaker baker person. Okay, so between the two, I'm going to take the one for the bottom uh, that has this kind of stuff on it, and I'm not going to cut it off. I don't care. <laughs> it's just for my husband. Take some out for your crumb coat. Take some out so you don't cross-contaminate it, really, with, uh, with the uh, other stuff that you're going to use on top of it. And it's actually going to be covered totally anyway, so it really wouldn't matter. But just for doing what we're supposed to do, that's what I'm going to do. So since this is nice and um, even on the top here, as you can probably see, just a nice even coat there. And just make sure it lines up with the bottom part of your cake. Looks pretty good to me. Now, take the rest of your frosting. My coat of mini frostings. Take your offset spatula. I tried it with a regular knife before I got smart and purchased some things. So anyway, I'm going to just do this, and this is really not going to be bad. Just normally doing a crumb coat. I want that frosting to come right to the edge there, see? I want that to be thick enough, so when I put my bench scraper up to it, it'll be just nice. <laughs> vegan glaze is one and a half cups of sugar, one quarter cup of coconut milk with two tablespoons of water, two tablespoons of agar agar, that's a sea vegetable gelatin flake, it is vegan, one eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar, make sure your cream of tartar is new. I wrote my year on it that I just bought it last month and it was 2019, so I have December 2019 on it, so I know when I bought it. And then the last ingredient is cacao butter. 
Some people call it cocoa butter, but it's cacao butter, and that's a half a cup. Has anybody ever seen Portlandia? Cacao. I'll put it on to like six, and I will add one and a half cups of sugar, quarter cup of the coconut milk, plus two tablespoons of water. 